Recording in progress. So good day to everyone. So the third topic now is all about neuroscience and brain development. So the first one, brain are built over time from bottom up. The basic architecture of the brain is constructed through an ongoing process that begins before birth and continues into adulthood. Early experiences affect the quality of the architecture by establishing either a sturdy or a fragile foundation for all of the learning, health, and behavior that follow. In the first few years of life, more than 1 million new neural connections are formed every second. After this period of rapid proliferation, connections are reduced through a process called pruning so that brain circuits become more efficient. Sensory pathways like those for basic vision and hearing are the first to develop, followed by early language skills and higher cognitive functions. Connections proliferate and prune in a prescribed order with later more complex brain circuits built upon earlier, simpler circuits. Next slide, please. The interactive influences of genes and experience shape the developing brain. Scientists now know a major ingredient in this de developmental process is the serve and return relationship between children and their parents and other caregivers in the family or community. Young children naturally reach out for interaction through bubbling, facial expressions, and gestures, and adults respond to the same kind of vocalizing and gesturing back at them. In the absence of such responses, or if the responses are unreliable or inappropriate, the brain's architecture does not form as expected, which can lead to disparities in learning and behavior. Next slide, please. So the third one is the brain capacity for changes decreases with age. The brain is most flexible or plastic early in life to accommodate a wide range of environments and interactions. But as the maturing brain becomes more specialized to assume more complex functions, it is less capable of reorganizing and adapting to new or unexpected challenges. For example, by the first year, the parts of the brain that differentiate sound are becoming specialized to the language the baby has been exposed to. At the same time, the brain is already starting to lose the ability to recognize different sounds found in other languages, although the windows for language learning and other skills remain open. These brain circuits become increasingly dif difficult to alter over time. Early plasticity means it's easier and more effective to influence a baby, baby's developing brain architecture than to rewire parts of its circuitry in the adult years. The fourth one, please. Next slide. Cognitive, emotional, and social capacities are inextricably intertwined throughout the life course. The brain is a highly interrelated organ, and its multiple functions operate in a richly coordinated fashion. Emotional well-being and social competence provide a strong foundation for emerging cognitive abilities, and together there are the bricks and mortar that comprise the foundation of human development. The emotional and physical health, social skills, and cognitive linguistic capacities that emerge in the early years are all important prerequisites for success in school and later in the workplace and community. Next slide. So the fifth one, toxic stress damages developing brain architecture, which can lead to lifelong problems in learning, behavior, and physical and health. So scientists now know that chronic unrelenting stress in early childhood caused by extreme poverty, repeated abuse, or severe maternal depression, for example, can be toxic to the developing brain. 
While the positive stress moderate short-lived physiological responses to uncomfortable experiences is an important and necessary aspect of healthy development. Toxic stress is the strong and relieved activation of the body stress management system. In the absence of the buffering protection of adult support, toxic stress becomes built into the body by processes the shape of the architecture of the developing brain. Okay na. So, hello guys. I am Marielle and I'm the one to discuss this topic, factors affecting biological and physical development. So, the first one is genetic inheritance. So, genetic inheritance is, this pertains to the acquired genes coming from the mother and father these genes are where the traits for physical characteristics originate these are evident characterized which unfold over time as a person grows and develop in addition even certain social characteristics may be passed on the offspring such as them pyramid and ex intellectual abilities so, ang inheritance daw is muna siya ang process by which genetic information is passed on from mother to child. So, example of this is kanang if both of our parents have green eyes, so for that, we might inherit that traits for having green eyes from them. And also, if our parents have curly hairs, freckles, or either skin colors, we adapt that traits. So, next one is hormones. So hormones is our body chemical messenger that, that travels in our blood streams to tissue or organs that work slowly over time and affect many different processes including growth and development. So ang hormones daw is siyang the human body that responds to a different kind of hormones which enable timely physically growth and development of our body parts. So hormonal is imbalance may have a de delaying effect on child's development so next is gender gender is play a big role in growth and development male and females manifest certain differences especially when they are nearing puberty in terms of, of body structures there are a number of striking features in which they differ not only is your child un undergoing physical change, but they are also experiencing behavior changes. So, we all know man, what is gender, diba? So, in short, gender is characteristics of women, men, girls, or boys that are socially construct. So, yeah, that's all my presentation. I will ta pass the mic to Mas. So... Good day, everyone. I'm Matt Lorenzo Garger, and I will be discussing the theories. So, first is developmental milestones. Behavior or physical skills seen in infants and children as they grow and develop, rolling over, crawling, walking, and talking are, con are all considered milestones. There are many different normal phases and patterns of development. Research has shown that the sooner the developmental surveys are started, the better. So this is this are the stages from first is infant birth to one year, they are able to drink from a cup, able to sit alone without support, bubbles, display social smile. So the next is toddler. From one to three years old, they are able to feed themselves neatly with minimal spilling, able to draw a line when shown one, able to run, pivot, and walk backwards. So the next is preschooler. From three to six years old, they are able to draw circle, square, able to draw stick figures to two to three features for people, touches about. Next, please. So, the next is school age child from 6 to 12 years old. 
begins gaining skills for team sport such as soccer, t-ball, or other team sports. Begin to lose baby teeth and get permanent teeth. Girls begin to show growth of their armpit and pubic hair, and also breast development. Men are key. First, menstrual period may occur in girls. So the last one is adolescent. So from 12 to 18 years old, they gain adult height and also they gain weight, sexual matu- maturity. Girls show growth of armpit, pubic hair, breast develop, menstru- menstrual period starts. So peer acceptance and recognition of vital importance. Understand abstract concepts. Boys show growth of armpit, chest, and pubic hair. Also, voice changes. So, second one is the ecological system theory by Ron Febner. So, defines complex layer of environment. Each having an effect of child development. The interaction between factors in the child's maturing biology, his immediate family, community, environment, and the societal landscape fuels and steers his development. This theory has recently been named Bioecological System Theory. So as you can see, the Browner's ecological system theory is contains of five layers. So it affects the child's development. So the first layer is one, the microsystem, the smallest and the most immediate environment in which the child lives in. So for example, like home, school, peer groups, and their community. And the second layer is mesosystem connections so they are defined as a relationship between the microsystem for example home and school peer group and family family and church so and uh, ecosystem the ecosystem is a relationship that may exist between two or more settings one one May which may not contain developing child but affects him indirectly nonetheless. Like for example, like a parent is asked for his promotion, sayang boss, sa trabaho and or a turn down siya. So na possibility nga atong parent ang young disappointment ang young kasuko is mapadulong sa bata. So ang um, next is the macro system macro system is the largest system that contains all the distant people and places that significantly affects the child and it's made up the child patterns and values especially the child's dominant beliefs and ideas so for example a child is in a war zone area who experience a different kind of development so if not as a war zone they were lucky na siya peace or something uh, wala siya naanad kay puro mangira yung naandan so the last one is the chrono system chrono system the transition and shapes of one lifespan may also involve the socio-historical context that may improve a person or major example of this is divorce so ang divorce is Dili lang ang parents or ang mga partners ang maapektuhan also their child behavior. Labi na kay pag if ever magbulag ang parents ni, wala na kay magatiman sa lang anak, wala na kay makatudlo sa lang sa lang mayong buhaton. So that's it. So that's all about Unit 2 Biological Development. Hope you understand our topic and learn more about what is biological department. So, thank you for listening guys and God bless you all. Bye!